Hi guys, uh, another weekend worth of work. Um, so we've got quite a bit happening this weekend. It's a Saturday morning. Um, we've just taken about 200 kgs of sand off the roof, so that's all gonna be sieved um, soon so we can do some blasting when needed. Um, but what we're gonna get into uh, this weekend, so over on the bathroom here, I'll show you what we've done. So we've finished off the last of the coving. So if you have a look up here, you can still see all of this green and everything. That's basically a 20 mil radius, so every single um, corner or angle or what have you has got a 20 mil radius on it now so I just got to give that a quick sand um, and then um, uh, go through and, and basically paint all of that so it'll be the last coat of two pack etch uh, and then we then we're on to the uh, the top coat on that so that's all that's all sanded it's nice and smooth and beautiful we just got to finish off the coving um, the other thing we've got to do is sicker the roof so behind me you can sort of see all these little white dashes in the roof um, I'll show you some that hasn't been done so if you look up here you can sort of see these gaps basically so there's a weld there there's a weld there there's a weld there etc and there's a gap in between so the bars that the um the roof is built out of it's 20 25 by 50 um millimeter tube a rectangle tube and it has a small radius on the on the actual corners and it's a bit of a pain you can't actually get um a, you know you can't completely seal off the air gap essentially between the the three mil steel of the roof um, and, the, and the bar that welds into it. Um, so we're going through and putting a bit of sicker um, all, all the way along. So all of that white stuff you can see is basically a sicker um, sealant just filling up that air gap and that stops condensation and any other issues around that. So we've got to finish that off and then we're going to paint that roof. Uh, we're also going to fit the door. So this, this red thing here is actually one of the doors. If I come back you can sort of see that. So that red thing is one of the rear doors, and then on this side here is another door. We just need, I haven't fitted that yet, I'll put that up soon. Um, but we need to actually uh, fit the door in and then straighten them. So when I welded them, we got a wee bit of a curve, so I'll show you this. So this, this gap here, so you can see at the top, it's quite thin, it's only maybe five mil. And in the middle here, it's probably half an inch, and then it goes down the bottom, goes back to about five mil. So when I welded it, it sort of bowed like that and did that on, on both sides. Um, so the way I'm going to straighten that is pretty much exactly the same as how I straightened the side doors. So I'm going to do some slices into the steel, so we'll go all the way through and not cut this back surface, but we'll, we'll come right up to this, this edge pretty much, and then we can bend the door to wherever we need and we'll just weld it back up. So it's a very, very easy and simple way of straightening that. Um, so I've got to get that done, and then finally I'm going to cove the, uh, the doors where the window sits. So I'll show you this again. So this is... So the, the window bonds onto the outside, actually, come around this way. So the window sits in here, bonds into the surface here. So this gap has been sort of precisely measured so that the window sits flush. Um, however, on this side, you can sort of see there's a weld there, there's a weld there, there's a bit of a, sorry, come down. There's a weld there, there's a weld a bit further down, and in between there's just, you know, an area where there's no weld, etc. What we're gonna do, because this is always a visible part of the boat, we're actually gonna run a cove all the way around just like what we did in the bathroom and it's just basically going to tidy it up and it's just a looks thing it's got no other no other purpose it just basically hides um, you know welds no welds welds no welds and just makes it all look nice um, so that's our weekend's work um, weep it on but uh, we'll press in and get it done
is our door that we're straightening. I um, just want to show you some of the things. So you can see up here, I basically sliced all the way into this point here, and I've done that three times. So there's another one here, uh, another one just here, and then another, a final one right down the bottom here. If you can see, there's a gap. So at the top there, it's about, I don't know, five mil away. It's a bit hard to see on the camera, but it's about five mil. And then as it gets down the middle here, it's quite, quite big. However, with these cuts in it, I can do that. So I can bend it to whatever I want. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clamp it straight, get it nice and beautiful, and then I'm gonna very, very carefully just weld all of these things. So, so I'm, instead of just buzzing a weld all the way around each one of them and putting lots of heat into it, I'm just gonna weld small bits at a time so that we can keep as much heat out of the door as possible um, and keep as little warping happening as possible. So let's get this all welded up and I'll show you how well we can straighten it. The door's all sort of welded up now. You can see, so this gray thing, this gray beam behind the door here, so this is the window frame and this is the door. You can sort of see that they're pretty much parallel all the way down, you know, lovely thin line sort of thing. Now this, this gray one is still bent. So when you look at it from the top down, you have a look there, this one here is still, is quite straight now. This one here sort of curves away, so it's a wee bit hard to see, but this one is actually spot on now. Um, what I have noticed though, is up in this top corner, it sticks out. So, it has to be flush, it has to be flush with the surface here, so this is the, the roof, and you can see that the door's got a bit of a kink, so it always had that kink, I didn't, didn't realize that until now. Um, so what I'm gonna do, now that the door's straight, I'm gonna twist the door to actually take that out. So, um, it lines up perfectly down the bottom, so it's clamped in place, so it's absolutely smicked down the bottom. It's straight and everything along there, I'll take all those clamps off and make sure that bit's all good, but then, all I've got to do is take this kink out. So it's pretty simple. What I have to do is I'm going to cut a line. I've basically sliced all the way through this beam here and leave this front, very front edge intact. And then same deal on this corner. I'm going to slice all the way through here. I'm going to leave, uh, where are we? I'm going to leave that edge there intact. Um, and what that allows, come back and get a better shot. So, it allows me to pull that door in on that top corner and then weld it up according to where it needs to go. So this is the back wall of the cabin. Um, so basically it's a three mil skin over top of 50 mil box section. So whether it's 50 by 25 or in this case there's a big beam that's, it goes along here. It's, I think it's 100 mil high, 50 mil wide. This three mil sticks out on top of whatever the beam measurements are. So these doors are both 50 mil thick. So I need to add three millimeters so this is a piece of three mil steel welded on top of these doors and that brings it flush with the surface of this so that these two here are flush um, in order to create the waterproof seal so i have to basically run this three mil all the way around like all, all four edges of that door there in order to lift it up to be flush with that surface and then in order to create a waterproof seal it's going to be a big overlapping 50 mil piece that goes all the way around the door like on, on all of the edges of the door so that uh, 50 mil seal welds on top of the 3 mil, and that gets the layers all exactly right. So the doors are a wee bit sort of piecemeal, um, but in the end it will look like one piece of steel, you won't notice it. Um, so that's what we're doing at the moment. I'll see if I can show you a bit further back. So we've got one that side done. This here is a piece of 3 mil, so between that grey and that red, that's all flush all the way around there. Um, we just have to put the 3 mil up this edge across the top and I've already welded the one on this side here so once we've got that, like, those two there done we'll be able to start doing the waterproof um, overlapping component. So the doors are welded together. You can sort of see we put this 50 mil, um, it's 
suppose you call it a watertight seal all the way around it. So there's going to be rubber behind all of that. So basically it goes all the way around on three sides. Um, and as the door shuts, that pretty much seals up hard up against. You can sort of see that it's relatively hard up against there. There's a wee bit of a gap, but that's going to be sealed up by a rubber um, like crushed seal, if that makes sense. However, what we've noticed, see down here, it's rubbing off the paint. And it's basically digging in as it goes like that. So that's a completely separate issue. I think it's actually not having the hinges far enough back. So the lever action, that's the pivot point there. What I'm thinking is, I actually think I need to move it back here somewhere so that as the door comes out, it sort of lifts off as opposed to slides, if that makes sense. Because I think sliding means this is too close to this edge here. I think if I had it back here, this would sort of more lift out as opposed to just sort of rotate. Cross that bridge when we get there though. Um, what we've noticed, with all of the extra welding and all that sort of stuff, the door has a slight bow like that. Um, so I'm going to slice through here all the way through up to this point here and leave this 6mm intact. And I'm going to do another one down here as well all the way through. Um, what that's going to allow me to do is push this part of the door forward ever so slightly. Um, and then weld it all back up again and we'll straighten that out, pull out. Um, and then finally, when it's up tight at the top there, it's not lining up at the bottom there. So you can see it's sticking out probably 10 mil or something at the bottom. So we have to take that twist out as well. So this is why it takes so long to get these doors done. Um, they're thin steel, they bend and warp, so they take a while once you start throwing a bit of heat in there to actually um, you know, get them all working properly. So I was just about to start chopping into these doors and um, yeah, seeing if we can straighten them that way when my neighbour Malcolm and his son Rod came over. Uh, they had a couple of ideas how we might be able to do it with brute strength, so we'll, um, we'll get into it and see if we can do it that way. touching the, the frame at the top, but the bottom here is about 5mm away from the bottom, so the door's got a bit of a twist, so we're trying to bend it back so that it's, it touches evenly all the way around, so that's what we're trying to get out at the moment.
So Malcolm and Rod uh, came over and gave us a hand um, to straighten up the doors. So we had um, a few warps and bends and stuff like that from putting a bit too much heat in when we were welding. Um, however, uh, we managed to get the doors absolutely blimmin' perfect. So what we've done, come back over here. I'll flip the camera around and I'll show you. So you sort of see this gap up here. It's, I don't know, maybe five, six mil, something like that. Comes down, comes down to about maybe sort of four mil or something around about there. But it maybe say top of it might be say eight mil. This is maybe five mil, something like that. And then it sort of does a slight wobble and goes back down to being about sort of I don't know four or five mil or something at the bottom. More than enough that we can deal with with a rubber seal. So it's only a couple of mil sort of leeway either way. So that's completely sweet. Um, over here, you can see we've got this piece of uh, 50 by 6 flat welded on the top there. So we've brought it so that you can sort of, I'll show you there, you can sort of see there's a little bit of a gap there. I'll wobble that, you can see it. So all around the door is about a 3 mil gap now. So right the way across that seal at the top, all the way down that seal on the right hand side, and then right across the bottom, there's about a sort of a, between a 3 and a 5 mil gap. So that actually allows us to jam up a rubber seal. Previously on this side here, the door was um, hard up against the paint and it was ripping all the paint off, so we had to straighten that. So we've modified the actual hinge mount points, so we've brought the hole out slightly. So that was an 8mm hole, we brought the hole out slightly, drilled at 10mm, so that it's all clean and true and whatever, did the same at the bottom. Um, so that's all good. So that door is pretty much finished, which is awesome because this morning I thought I was going to have to throw the whole thing away and start again.